And, you know, you've you got to figure if Perry isn't practicing and planning to do much better than he has done so far, he's making a big mistake. Yes, <clears throat> and also because his team and his wife have told everybody that he's working hard and has been practicing and he'll be better prepared next time. So um, expectations are higher and he's going to need to meet them. You are right, or contributors are going to begin to get very worried. I think the big question of the week is, um, can Perry come back? I mean, the money sounds good. Brit's right. If it came in early, oh well. If it's not still coming in, not good. That debate has got to, to, to be good for him. And frankly, I think that Ron Paul winning, I mean, we like to dismiss, you know, straw polls, especially when Ron Paul wins them. But Ron Paul winning that value voters poll, that could have been a big thing for Perry. And, and if he had won it, we'd say, he's coming back. But uh, I think that a lot of those value voters chose Ron Paul, who doesn't talk about those same values that Rick Perry does, over Rick Perry, and I think that's saying something. Now, I, I just want to follow up with you because I get, I've already gotten emails today, even before the show, people saying, you know, you discount Ron Paul, you guys in the media, uh, and if he wins or he does well, it's always... I mean, doesn't he deserve some credit? And he does. <laughs> and I want you to take I mean, A.B. Stoddard. I, I did say, and we always discount them. I mean, Ron, Ron Paul made a joke before the Ames poll that if he, if he didn't win, it would be an important straw poll. And if he did win it, it would be nothing. And so he knows that he almost won. He's, he, and he almost 150 won 152 votes. votes. And so, and so and he, you know, he is very good at winning them. He's very organized. But as I said, the Values Voters Summit would have been a perfect place for Rick Perry to come back. And he didn't. And, and I just think it says something. You know, Bill, uh, first of all, I have to ask you, because the, with Christy dropping out, I mean, I know this is, I want to hear about your emotional state this week, uh, but I also want to talk about... <laughs> you, don't want to hear, you don't want to hear about my emotional state, really. No, I do want to hear about your emotional state. How upset were you, one? <laughs> and two, isn't there a growing inevitability now that Mitt Romney is going to be the nominee? Well, one, I'm used to being disappointed in this cycle, so I've uh, taken it like a man. Um, there is a growing sense of inevitability about Romney, and I think if you had to bet now, of course, he's, he's the favorite to be the nominee. But people in Washington are much too quick to, A, anoint people, and B, sort of assume they're going to have a, a, a problem-free path to the nomination. George W. Bush, Bob Dole, people who really did, did and were the front runners who ended up being the nominee, and that would suggest Romney could follow that path, they all had hiccups, they lost primaries, they lost caucuses, they had rough weeks or two, and I'm sure Romney will have that, and I don't know at whose expense. Perry is being underestimated in Washington. That is, uh, if you step back and he had horrible debate performances, he still has a respectable support in the polls. He has a lot of money. He's the governor of Texas. Uh, he, he could come back with a decent debate performance. And Cain, Gingrich, uh, Santorum, I'm not so sure one of them won't come from pretty far down to have a bit of a run at and Romney. It, it is interesting. I mean, you'd look at these polls and... and Right. National polls, Romney just can't get above about a quarter of the electorate. So there's still an, I mean, three quarters of the electorate really would love yeah, to. And that's a Republican electorate. Yes, I know. Yeah, yeah, he hasn't made the sale. He could make, he could make the sale and probably will be able to make the sale, you know. But, but it, there's more resistance to him than one might have thought at this point. Why? Well, the numbers this week on fundraising suggest that a lot of the big money people that were holding out for Chris Christie uh, decided, you know what, let's ante up now for Mitt Romney. So he's going to have even a larger amount of money that will help to sustain him through the course of this campaign. The second thing to say is that you see now uh, I was going to move their, uh, their caucus up to early January because Florida moved it up. This is all to Mitt Romney's benefit because, again, he has structure, campaign structure, activists, and money on the ground. And then you get into those long, deadly periods between after all the rush in early January towards February and then onto Super Tuesday. People who are going to survive that have money. Mitt Romney has the money. But I come back to what you were saying, to what Bill was saying. You know, three out of four Republicans uh, are disappointed right now with Mitt Romney. So you have to think a lot of those people, especially given what we uh, you know, saw this week where they're questioning whether or not ev evangelicals will vote for a Mormon, you have to think, a lot of people are just not that excited about Mitt Romney at a time when the far right, you know, the Tea Party right, wants somebody who's going to get out there and punch President Obama in the nose. So who has this, the, a base of the most enthusiastic supporters? The answer is easy. It's Ron Paul. And if you know Ron Paul, I've known him for a long time, it's understandable. He's a very nice man. I, I mean, agree. a very nice man. Uh, and a he, smart Thoughtful man. Thoughtful well. man. Interesting ideas. Some of them I think are way too exotic for the mainstream America. 
But this core, this core base he has will sustain him with money and organization and all he needs to continue in this process for a very long time. I don't think he's going to get knocked out. And I think the Republican Party has to worry that when all is said and done, he might figure, well, I can't make it in this party. This party is, is not for me. And if he goes third party in the, in the, in the, in the fall, uh, he's not going to be taking votes away from Barack Obama. Not you from. know, I think that this is the age of Ron Paul in so many ways. I think he's the father of the Tea Party. His son's in the Senate. I think you're exactly right, that people don't understand the power of Ron Paul. Well, I just, I just Juan and I agree on a matter of politics. There you no, go. No, no, it has to be <laughs> right. I, no, I was going to say, that sings some. Uh, listen, if we end up in Des Moines uh, the last week of the year, I just, let's all do a secret Santa. Can we? <laughs>